Hello again. After my wonderful but busy week of miniature in tune, I've come for a little holiday to the island of Ere in Denmark. And this is the town of Ereusköbing, an old town with wonderfully colorful little houses. And the oldest ones date back from the 17th century. And apart from these beach huts for mice, and the doll's house, the children's doll's house, I saw in a shop window. I did not see any miniatures on this island, but I thought the houses themselves, they were so lovely. Um, they would be a wonderful inspiration for a miniature house or miniature houses, maybe some, um, a whole row of miniature houses in 48 scale. I really like this house. I don't know how old it is. I'm guessing 17th or early 18th century. But look at the door and the door panels. Those are so interesting. They remind me of billowing sheets or pillows. Um, I've never seen anything like it. Really beautiful. I looked up the price and it was uh, 2,395,000 krone, which is about 322,000 euros. Well, it's not bad, but it's a small house. Great location though. <laughs> now this one, which was a little bit further down the street, already looks like a doll's house. Very charming. This is not for people in high heels. Aren't these colors just wonderful? Pink and white and yellow and green and this brick color with black and the sage green of the windows. Such beautiful combinations. And this door, the sage green door with that knocker, that knocker is fantastic. This is my favorite. Time for a little break and I could have gone for the local rum, which apparently is delicious, but I always go for tea. And if you're a golfer, well, what better place to play around a golf than here? Look at those views. And if you get bored, you can always take a little dip in the sea. There's the beaches right there. And um, yes, I know the skyline isn't straight, but I was on top of a lighthouse and um, I'm afraid of heights. So this is really scary for me. Beautiful, but scary. Well, that was it. My miniature trip to Denmark has come to an end and I'm yet on another ferry, the third one this trip, but this time I'm on my way home.
Well, after coming home from tune, I think my desk could use a clean up. Oh, well, I hope it looks like this at your place as well sometimes. <laughs> I don't think I'm alone in that. But anyway, I have to get this cleaned up because there's not much you can do when it looks like this. There. I washed it good as new. <laughs> that was acrylic paint and it actually came off um, with a little bit of soaking. It's still a little bit on there, but that's fine. So a few weeks ago, when I was getting ready to go to Miniature in Tune in Denmark, I showed you this tool chest and um, and everything that was in there. And this bottom drawer wasn't working. So I took everything out and I put it in a plastic box, which wasn't very, um, I don't know, didn't work as well as I hoped. But um, miraculously, my drawer is working again. I don't know why, because I didn't do anything to it. I just put it back where it was and it opens and closes again. Like nothing had happened. Uh, many of the things that are in here, especially these files, I do use a lot. So that got me thinking that um, I actually would rather have these uh, tools closer to where I'm working. So basically on my work desk. And my work desk is a little bit cleaner now, but still this bit in the back it's just not working because it accumulates all kinds of stuff that get pushed to the back. So I thought I would like to do something else. I would like to make a tool caddy or several tool caddies and uh, maybe something like a, I put, put a little bit of a board up here. Um, and there's actually, there's a my work table in the back and um, stuff that can fall in between the cracks. So I started thinking and I went on to Pinterest to um, get some ideas. This is the um, pin board I made for the tool caddies. And here's one that I really liked. It's very simple, but it looks very effective. And this is this is kind of what I want to do as well. Uh, for the files and for some of the other tools and it doesn't have to be fancy like this one this one's nicely finished but it's a simple design and I think that works um, I have seen a lot of them and I've pinned a lot of them and here's another one much bigger but one of the other things I really liked um, here's one that incorporates like glues and everything. I won't be doing that, I think, but it's a nice idea. Some of them you can just pick up like this one and put in a box all together, which looks really good. Then I could take it with me to classes. It does look nice. Let me see. There was, oh, this one's really beautiful. I like that. That one even has dovetails and everything. I won't be doing that. I'm going to keep it really simple, but I do really like that. And they use some nice wood as well. Now, I also like this, which is a wood pliers rack uh, to store. Uh, no, not a wood pliers, a pliers rack made from wood. Uh, of course, it's to store your pliers, which I do like. Um, that's something I may do as well make one of those and then here's a very pretty one well, actually the tools are looking beautiful and here's an idea i really liked um this is made of a a knife block and here they put all the um the uh, router no not the router but like uh, the bits for the dremel and everything in there and I thought that was a really good idea, but I'm not going to do that because it seems to me like it takes up a lot of space. 
and I don't have a, a um, knife block, a spare knife block. I just use them for my knives. Knives. So, <laughs> and here is another thing I really liked uh, for the spray cans, and I may do that in the future because I have my spray cans in drawers and it takes up a lot of space. So this would be a great idea to store them um, somewhere <laughs> if I have some wall space. And then the next idea which I think I will be making is this. Um, these are just blocks of wood at an angle with holes drilled in them. And I think that's a great idea. And um, I think I will do that for um, maybe some of my drills, drill bits. And, and here's a professional one. I think that looks really good. Um, I won't need that many. <laughs> and I think these are the ones you can buy somewhere. I don't know which brand they are. But it does look really good. Um, and here's another homemade one. And this one looks a little bit nicer. The only thing I, I don't understand is why they have these really sharp drill bits, drills here. That looks dangerous to me. You could just hurt yourself if you grab into one of those drills. I would have the pointy sides down, not up. Although you then you won't be able to see which drill it is. Maybe that's why. It's nice. I, I'm going to use this idea. And then there's several. Here's another one of those beautiful ones that you can buy. I guess it's one that you buy. I'm not sure. So, yeah, and here's here's another simple one that I liked. Um, very simple, but quite effective, I think. So, yeah, I'll be making a little layout and um, I'll start making something like this. Well, actually more like that. That's the first one I showed. And uh, if I don't like it, if it's not as functional as I thought it would be. The material is, the cost of the materials is not very high, so I can just change it or make another one, make a new one. That's not such a problem. So um, yeah, I'll go ahead and do that. So I'm back from the DIY store and I bought some um, multiplex boards and one this one is going in the back here and the other one I'm going to make the tool caddies out of. Okay the first step is easy because I'll just put this piece of wood or plywood which I had cut to the right length behind there. And like that. Um, and then I have to cut some holes over there so that the electrical cord for my extension, um, what is that called? The plug extension, whatever, <laughs> can get through. And there's another one on the other side, which I also have to do. But that's easy. Quick sip of tea. Lovely. Um, and I think I'll use my Dremel to do this. I think it will be quick and easy, hopefully. Let's see if I can do that while well, the board is there. I don't know. <laughs> oh, maybe if I plug it in, it would help. I did manage to make the hole with the Dremel bit, the sanding bit, which was actually quite easy. Um, and then I uh, attached the, the board to my work table in the back and with just some screws. And, and it is straight onto my 
desk now, but my desk is a little bit bowed. It's an old desk, but it's fine. Um, and then I changed my mind about the extension, uh, the plug extension or the socket extension. And I decided to have it upright instead of laying down on my desk. I think this will be more practical. And uh, so I didn't need the hole after all. Although I could have had the the cord at the bottom, but I think this is easier. And I may move it a little bit more to the middle, depending on how my um, tool caddies uh, turn out and where where I want them. So we'll see. And I just put some double-sided tape on the back um, to to keep it there. So, well, stage one. <laughs> It's finished. Well, that was an easy bit. So here are my files all spread out and these two and these are the ones that I use most. And these are actually for silver work, but I use them in other projects as well. And I love these big ones. And they're, this one is, I think it's cut one. So the it's quite coarse uh, and it needs a clean, <laughs> but I use it a lot. So it's half round on one side and straight on the other. And um, I really like this one. And of course I like the long ones as well, the, the needle files. I use those a lot as well. So those are going in and those big ones have to go in and these sandpaper, um, these paper files, I like to put those in. And these, um, yeah, I don't use them a lot. They're old and they're not um, all very good anymore. But um, I think I think I should put them in. And uh, look at that. That <laughs> really needs to be cleaned. And uh, maybe see if I can get that to work again because that and it's, like I said, it's an old one. These were given to me. Um, they were actually of a great, belonged to my great uncle. A um, long time ago. So, let's make a template. Dust extractor. <laughs> Uh, I'm glad it's done because it's it's very warm today and uh, I'm standing next to my dust extractor which gets really warm or hot actually so uh, I'm glad I got this finished It is finished. I cut all the holes uh, both sides, made some supports for the sides and I cut a center section with um, kind of a handle. I cut a curve in there and I decided to cut the center bit out in an effort to make it a little bit lighter and uh, <laughs> I don't know but it works. It's not the prettiest but it works. And uh, now it's time to uh, put all the stuff in it that I accumulated on my desk because, man, 
it has turned into a huge mess again. So that's what I'll do now. Clean it up again. <laughs> but now I have this. There. That's a lot better. Now the question is, of course, am I going to keep it like that? <laughs> I think not. And I didn't expect it, but it's full. There's hardly any holes left and I still have this bundle of files. And they're all, well actually there's a couple of good ones in there. They still have to go in there. I've got my Riffler files in there. Those are the curved ones, which I also use a lot. And of course, my long needle files, my favorites, and the shorter ones. And then on the other side, oh, here I managed to put my pencils because I thought I would put my pencils in here, but there's not much room left. <laughs> so, and uh, on this side, well, I thought this would be nice to put my files in and the ones in the back you can't you can hardly see that but um the big ones actually do rest in there the longer files but the um the other ones don't of course <laughs> but i like it um and it could have been even bigger because it's already filled up and uh, i did put some other stuff in here like my little Blusher, which I use for dusting and it just stays in there which is great and I can just pull it out like that so that's a good spot for it and some of my scissors but I have a whole bunch more in there so but for now I'm, I'm quite happy with it um, time will tell whether I'm uh, whether it's useful or not I think it will be and uh, yeah, now it's time for some tea. When I was doing the tour of the Curtis Center in my miniaturist journal number 28, I showed you the class proposals which were hanging on the, on the board um, in June. And those pictures weren't very good and I said I would show you better pictures. And um, I have now posted all of the class proposals on our Facebook page. So if you go to our Facebook page, and here it is, Miniature in Tune, Summer School in Denmark, and um, you, you scroll down, um, we start with uh, proposal number 10, which is Jeff Wanacott's class, and unfortunately he did not send us any pictures yet, so these are the pictures from this year. Um, and then we go down and then there's uh, Ursula's proposal for marquetry and um, an easel. And Michael Yurkovich is doing vacuum forming a chair and a folding lawn chair. Well, they're proposing to do that. And um, so we go down and then there's Diane, Diana Meibom, who is doing um, an elaborate painted ceiling. And you can choose what to do, but you you sh and and also um, etching, but you should go and have a look at the pictures yourself and at all the class descriptions. Here's Jens Storp with beautiful uh, silver book cover uh, on a leather bound book, and Eric Goddard is proposing to do like a rooftop or a Paris studio. I like this one. And um, Jeannie Brownlee Anderson has a proposal for some wonderful pieces, which I also showed you on the board. I really like the still life. Uh, the other one as well. I, I took her class and it was great. And then there's Beth Freeman Kane with a beautiful little scene. And Mar uh, Marie Louise Markhorst, who is doing copper. Um, which looks really interesting. And then there's Maria Rita Baldan uh, from Italy, who is doing 
uh, female class, uh, make sculpting your old, your own doll, and also dressing it. So have a look at our Facebook page and um, look at the look at the class descriptions and all the photos. I hope you'll come next year. <laughs> Oh, and I forgot to say that next week, for the people who want to join us in June next year, um, you can vote. There will be a poll uh, on the Facebook page and you can vote for the classes that you like best. So that can help us to make a decision of which teachers to invite to June next year. But also it's time to start making some miniatures again because apart from the um, projects I did in June, uh, like the female class I did, I still have to finish a few things, and the commode I made, well, <laughs> I didn't finish it, still have to finish that. Uh, I haven't done anything for ooh, close to a month, I think, because of working uh, on the preparations for June. So I still have to finish the bed curtains and some of the dressing for the bed. And I have to make a door for this room. And that's not the door because it's way too small. But I think if I start this next week, um, I'll be doing a tutorial on how to make doors. Um, so you can follow along with that. But that will be next next week. So, I hope to see you then. Until next time.